Howdy Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, and today we're going to be talking about the game of Pi Gal Poker, which is strangely enough a game I learned in a Chinese laundromat in Oakland, California, and that's a true story. Pi Gal is a really cool version of poker that was originally created by the American casino owner Sam Tarosian in the mid 1980s. Now, he didn't patent it. So it's free for all of us to use and pretty much for any casino in the world to use. Now, Pai Gao links back to probably the first casino game ever, which is Pai Gao Chinese Dominoes, which is, has nothing really to do with Pai Gao Poker, but it's just an interesting point nonetheless. Anyway, Pai Gao Poker has taken the casinos by storm and has been going strong for about 30 years. In simplistic terms, the goal of the game is simple. Each player is dealt seven cards and they must form two poker hands with it one a five card hand and one a two card hand. If your two different hands beats the dealer's two hands, you win. Now, if only one of those hands happens to win, then it's a push. And if both those hands happen to lose, then you're a double loser and you lose your money as well. I guess you'd be a triple loser at that point. As you might guess, the game itself is quite easy to learn and anyone who has played poker is quite frankly perfect for the game. It's a nice, fun, slow paced game which can be played at any live casino that offers it. Now, the house edge in Pi Gao is pretty low. And in fact, if you learn how to set your hands optimally, the percentage can be dropped down to about 2.8% overall. Now, when you win a hand of, of Pi Gao poker in any sort of casino, typically there'll be about a 5% commission on your win. But some casinos have chosen not to do this. And with no house commission, that banker has about only a 1.3 advantage overall. So without further ado, let's get right into how to play Pi Gao Poker. So as you can likely figure out based on my simple explanation, Pi Gao is a game of pushes. And I do mean pushes. I mean a lot of pushes, like, like, like a frightening amount of pushes. It's going to seem at times like you're not winning any money. You're just playing the same bet over and over again, like you're stuck in Groundhog's Day. Which is cool though, because as you sit down at a Pi Gao table, live or online, you can play quite a while with that same bet. Um, and so this is a great introduction to inexperienced poker players who don't necessarily want to dive into the game uh, and risk losing a lot of money in the long run. So the odds are definitely in favor that you're going to win one hand per deal, which makes it a relatively low risk casino game. And it's really a relaxed way to interact with your fellow gamers at any casino. Now, it's an interesting thing about this is even more camaraderie as offered in the game is that uh, you have one dealer and you could have seven players around a table and they're all playing against that. And so uh, that one particular dealer. So usually it's a win or lose together kind of scenario. Another cool thing about Pi Gao is if you're not sure how to set your hand, you can always just turn your cards face up and ask the dealer for some help. Help! I need him help! I have five aces! Is that good? Like most casino games, Pi Gao begins with a player placing a bet before receiving any cards. And this is going to be the only money that you're going to bet during the whole duration of the hand. So it's kind of important that you make the right amount and that your bet is within the minimum and maximum betting limits of that particular table. Those betting limits should be clearly posted on the table uh, or alternatively, if you're playing in an online casino, they'll be posted clearly visibly somewhere for you to see. Uh, at some Pi Gao tables, you are also offered the option of a bonus bet, which is essentially betting on a possible premium hand. Uh, in most casinos, this is a three of a kind or better. And the better your premium hand, the more the casino will pay out. So it's essentially a sliding scale where uh, there's, it's kind of like, kind of like poker slots in a lot of ways. Anyway, so the bonus wager doesn't depend on whether you win your main bet or not. So you could actually end up with a push but still be end up winning with this premium bet because you got three of a kind. Now, my advice to you though is never take the bonus bet. The house edge on these bonus bets is comparatively huge. Uh, you're going to pretty much mathematically lose money in the long run if you're making these bonus bets. Now, if you have some sort of weird sixth sense or psychic intuition and you know that three of a kind is coming, then by all means, you know, premium bet with reckless abandon. But for the most part, if you're playing statistically sound poker, mathematically it's not in your favor. When it comes to dealing, after the bets have been made, each player is typically dealt seven cards face down. Now, the interesting thing about this game is it's played with a 53 card deck. Now, you might be saying to yourself, 
Hey Dom, I thought there were only 52 cards. Well, that's right, audience at home, but this actually has a Joker in it. I thought we weren't supposed to play with the Jokers. No, we're supposed to play with the Jokers in Pi Gow. That's the interesting part about the game. Now, I'll be explaining how the Joker works in just a minute. What's important to note is that at typical Pi Gow tables, the dealer is going to deal seven cards to six players at the table and to himself, even if there are not six players at the table. So even if you, uh, are just alone at the Pi Gow table, the dealer is gonna deal out five other hands. And you might think that someone else is coming, you just don't know who. But the truth is, is they do this in order to leave only four cards uh, left over, and those are the muck cards. Uh, these get kind of tossed, and of course, any respective hands that aren't being played by the particular players get um, mucked as well. But uh, for whatever reason, they tend to deal out the whole deck uh, with each particular round of Pi Gow. So how exactly do you arrange a Pi Gow hand? It is your job to arrange your cards into two particular poker hands. Now, as I said earlier, you are given seven cards, five, six, seven. Uh, and if you need any help, you can of course ask the dealer for assistance, but you do wanna keep your hand as secret as possible until the reveal, because there are some strategic reasons why you don't want the dealer to know how you are going to arrange your hands. What's important to note is that when it comes to terminology, you have a five card hand and a two card hand. And the five card hand is known as the back hand or the big hand, or sometimes referred to as the high hand. And your two card hand is called the front hand or sometimes referred to as the small or low hand. It is made up of just two cards, as I said earlier. Your low hand can only be high cards or a pair. So there's no simple, way of just making it a straight or even making it a straight flush or anything like that. All you can hope for is a high card or a pair. Now, what about that joker I told you about? Yes, there is a joker in the deck. The joker can be used to complete a straight in the backhand or five card hand. It can also be used to complete a flush. It can also be used for an ace in the rare circumstance where you're not using it as a uh, flush card or a straight card, you can always just use it as an ace. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's in your backhand or your small hand or uh, front hand, then it doesn't really matter. It's always gonna be an ace when it's in this particular hand over here. Now, uh, when arranging your hand, it's important, oh, there's the joker. That was actually not set up at all. So that's really, that's really convenient. Remember that uh, you can use this as either a card for a straight or a card for a flush or, uh, or an ace. Those are your three options. Now, um, I have obviously a pair of twos. I can see that right off the bat. And I have nine, 10 jack. So I'm, I kind of had a straight here going, but I'm missing a couple of key cards. So I don't have a straight at all. Um, now, I have a couple of options on how to arrange this. I could obviously arrange it into two pair where I could have aces and twos, uh, and then probably just take a nine kicker. And then I arrange the best hand I can over here, which would be jack high. Um, another option would be to uh, make sure I put, you know, maybe a pair of twos over here and I leave uh, the pair of aces in my, my back hand. What's very important to know here is that your five card hand must be better than your two card hand, okay? Your back hand must be better than your small hand, all right? Uh, they can be equal, but they must at least be equal or better, all right? It must outrank it or equal it. It's a rule. If for some reason uh, I did this the opposite way, um, if I put uh, the joker and the uh, ace over here, then what I would have is a pair of aces, and over here I'd have a pair of twos, which would be a foul. In a case where somebody puts the better hand in their two-card hand, then they are fouled out and they lose their bet automatically. Now, let's go back to the way I'd shown it previously. And so let's go ahead and just, for sake of brevity's sake, just give my dealer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. And let's just take a look at what the dealer would, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, so we have a uh, pair of kings. That's probably, that's pretty good. Uh, five, six, seven. Okay, no straights here, no flushes. All right, so it uh, looks like that's probably gonna be my second best hand, right? Yes, all right. So this is actually rather interesting. I did not set this up again. This is, 
I was actually just surprised about how many face cards I, I thought the dealer had beaten me. Um, this is just completely random. So it just worked out in this particular situation. Um, so I compare the two hands respectively. Over here, I have a pair of aces, which of course is better than a pair of kings. And then over here, I have a pair of twos, which as bad as a pair of twos is, it's still better than queen high. So I have successfully beat the dealer with my hand that I showed you earlier. Uh, and overall, that's pretty impressive first time around. I literally did not set this up. I'm No one's more shocked than me. A very important rule within the game of Pi Gao, and one of the things that sets it apart from traditional variations of poker is the following rule, which is normally you can form a straight in any game of poker. Now, with a straight, it's of course uh, five cards in sequence. Here I have the highest possible straight you can have, an ace high straight, um, ace, king, queen, jack, and 10. Uh, and this is the best straight you can possibly have. It beats everything uh, in the straight rank, okay? Um, and the and so it even beats a king high straight or a queen high straight, all right? But in the game of Pi Gao, the second highest ranked straight there is, is actually a wheel, ace, two, three, four, and five. Uh, these, this is the second highest ranked straight you can have. So in the hierarchy of straights within Pi Gao, it goes ace high, and then the wheel, then a king high straight, then a queen high straight, so on and so forth, all the way down to a six high straight. So normally a six high straight is the second lowest ranked straight you can have, and a five high or a wheel is the, is the lowest. But in Pi Gao, this is the best straight you can have, and this is the second best. It's worth noting though that a lot of casinos have actually dropped this rule. Um, and it's important that you check to make sure before you make a faux pas that um, the wheel might not be the second highest ranked uh, straight overall. It all depends on the particular casino. As I said, um, some casinos have, cho have chosen to uh, eschew this rule um, to make it more simpler because it kind of breaks from traditional poker uh, logic or teaching. So some people get confused about it. So they decided to get rid of the rule, I guess. But overall, the original rules of Pi Gao included this uh, idea that the wheel would be the second highest ranked straight that one could have. Now, when it comes to the dealer setting their hands, they're going to set their five and two card hands in what's referred to as the house way. This house way varies from casino to casino. Uh, and if you're curious about a casino that offers Pi Gao and what their houseway is, you can make sure to check out that casino's gaming guide. When it comes time to determine who won, you need to compare the respective hands against each other. The player compares their big hand, their backhand, against the dealer's backhand, and then the small hand is compared against the dealer's backhand. And if the player has a better hand for both, they win. It's a one for one uh, payout. So if you bet, for example, $5 and you happen to win both hands, you win $5 additionally. It, it, so you'd win 10 in addition to your $5 bet. Uh, if only one hand is won by the dealer or the player, then it's a push where that means that the bet rolls over to another round of Pi Gao. Uh, it's also worth noting, of course, that if you lose both hands, for example, if the player lose, has a weak hand against the dealer and a weak hand, they obviously lose their bet as one would expect. Uh, it's important to note though, that the house has an advantage and that specific advantage is that it always wins ties. So in this example that I provided for you, um, I have a big hand right now, which is a straight and I'm comparing it against the dealer's hand, which is just a pair of nines. So obviously a straight beats a single singular pair, so that means that I have won this particular hand. Now, when I compare our small hands against each other, I have a pair of sixes and they have a pair of sixes. Now the dealer wins ties. Uh, so in this case, if this exact scenario came up at a Pi Gao table, this would result in what's called a push and the money would just roll over to another round of betting. Now, it's also worth noting that if, for example, I have a pair of nines as well over here, okay? Again, the house always wins ties. Um, and so I, they have a nine, a pair of nines, and I have a pair of nines, and the kicker cards are irrelevant in this particular say, sense. So even though we both have queens, and then I have a 10 and a jack, my it does not matter that the uh, dealer over here only has a seven and four, 
they're irrespective of each other. Winner goes to the house if case of equal ranked hands, okay? That's the only thing that matters. So that concludes our introduction to the game of Pi Gao. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this particular video, make sure to clickety-clack that like button. And if you really like the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring-a-ding-ding that notification bell because it'll be the only way that you'll be guaranteed to be notified every single time we upload a video like this to the channel. And on the subject of videos we have up on the channel, we have literally scoured the internet looking for as many variations on the game of poker as we can find, as many as we could shake a stick at. So we have uh, Chinese poker, Russian poker, Omaha, Texas Hold'em, seven card stud, five card draw. And so we are gonna continue putting up as many variations of the game of poker as we can. If you have any particular ones that you're fond of, also leave those as a comment down below. And guys, remember, sharing is caring. So share this video with your friends so they can learn about Pi Gao and you guys can set up your own Pi Gao night. My name's Dominic. This is the All-America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly.